Okay, uh, people joining this live stream, uh, this is one of four live streams of the day. Um, this is about the redesign of the appearance of formal symbols. And I think we have all kinds of people here to uh, talk about this. So the issue here is that um, in a case like this, is, the, is this, this is the old version, right? With all this dotty stuff. Correct. Yes, we haven't changed this. Yeah. Right. No, nothing has been implemented. I don't okay. even know what someone would want to implement. So. Okay, fine. So the issue is we think this is dotty, so to speak. It's ugly. Right. So I think what we agreed last time we were discussing formal symbols is that we would go and try and use something like the um, uh, something like double struck or something like that. Wasn't, is that what we... Yes, so so the idea was to use something similar to double stack. We discussed the, the problem that there are already some things in the system that are typeset with uh, double stack, like the differential D, reals, E, etc. Okay, and, and the argument you're making here is what? That there's... Well, this is a reference uh, in which they use dots. It's only that they wow. use dots for uh, uh, the un under dot, not an above that. I can't even see. Is there? Oh, there's an under dot right there. Exactly. So interestingly, they only use it under the summation sign. So it's indicating this is a bound variable. And then you have to infer that yourself for the summand. Why do they bother to do that? Well, because sometimes this the summation contains conditions. Like you see the first one on the next page. So it has a condition and you want to know over which ones you are summing. Oh, I see. Equals n. Exactly. And then those are the things. Those are the pure variables. So in other words, this is a way of indicating that they're really, in our situation, that there would be sort of a third variable. Mm -hmm. right. In addition to the condition. Okay. All right. Fine. But this was just an example to show that the dots have been used, but only one. And I was wondering whether having one dot instead of two would, would help. Because sometimes we have the tendency to look too much, I mean, to look more at the upper part of the letters because it, it contains more information. So perhaps it feels less cluttered if we just just one under that. Okay, but the alternative, and we have design folk here, right? Yeah. Um, yeah so the, the alternative is to try to use something, which is, I think, what we had concluded last time. Yes. Is to indeed. try to use something that is more in the like the double struck family or something. Let's try to avoid going gothic. I think that really is kind of a... Okay, so font people. What variants can you imagine using for fonts? Uh, other than weights and slants, you mean? Um, well, okay, so is there some exotic thing that we could use, like a back slant? Is that completely crazy? Uh, it's interesting. Uh, it's there are fonts that slant that way, but not as a result of you know the formatting coming from an operating system. It, it, it's just part of the design. Pretty unusual. Should, um, we, should we look at that for a second? I mean, just for the hell of it, just because that's a variant that isn't. Um, let's see. Can we simulate that with with image processing? Anybody got an idea how to do that? So, I mean, if we take, um, uh, can we, can we, um, well, here, here's a, no, uh, how, how will we do that? It's a Generally sharing. Transform. Yeah, it's, it's a, a sharing. sharing. Can you tell me what it would be? Sharing, look at the page, sharing transform, and then the angle, negative angle, how much you yeah. wanted to share. I think I have to use this version. Okay. In the 2D so. case. Sharing transform. Okay, 30 degrees, zero one. Is that um so I can I can put that into an image transformation, is that right? Yes. 
And what does the zero one mean? What does it mean? Is there an it, image geometric transform or image transformation? So that uh, one goes sort of backwards, right? Oh, so maybe it needs to be the other. Okay, so let's say style a fifty. Maybe use M. Okay. Oh, come on. What did this do? Do we need image processing folk in here? That Can you try image forward transformation? Why does it why does it change the bounding box? I mean we can see what it's doing there. But why does it change um do, do you see what I'm saying? Why does it why does it cut off the boundary there? Um Probably it keeps it at the same size image. So yeah, if, you, if you padded the original image, you will get it all. Okay. Can somebody tell me how to do that? Like image pad? Yeah, I understand. Anybody know what image pad? You couldn't get away with just putting a space in front of the M, could you? Brilliant. Now, why did I, the color negate was wrong, apparently. Okay. Well, apart from that very bizarre piece there, which I don't understand very well. So this would allow us, so let's go ahead and- yeah, That's um, the empty space off the image being rotated in, right? Yes. <laughs> okay, so let, let's just see what this would look like if we go, uh, and, and Andre, what's the right um, angle to use? Any thoughts? Uh, not really. I, I think you're doing okay with the 30 degrees right now. So I'm not saying I love it. Okay, so let's just get an alphabet there. kind of amusing. I mean, it's not very distracting in a sense. If you saw those characters in a um, in an expression, I claim they wouldn't be they wouldn't be particularly distracting. I would try 25 percent. It's 30 is a bit much. Let's try 20 just for the hell of it. But I mean, my main point is, would these be distinctive? And would they be I'm a little worried if they're too small, as subscripted indices might be, that the italic would be a bit subtle, especially on the I's and L's. Well, let's see how that compares to the forward shearing. Um, oh, boy. Uh, Sandra on our live stream has has um, uh, posted a Wikipedia article about um, uh, left leaning italics are very rare in Latin alphabet. Yes, where an attention grabbing effect is sought. Right. Well, it's a reason to use them. So what would that look like if we were to combine, uh, anybody know how we can get rid of that stupid thing on the right-hand side there? Um, I can then, try remove the space after the pal. Oh, remove the space after. No, uh, that would no, come I'll out. I'll just that, cut into it. Yeah, right, because it's 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 it'll have to be trimmed we have to do an image trim on the right hand side yeah. but the thing i'm trying to do here is to see what this will look like if we were to actually put these into formulas All right so imagine one of these formulas oh ca can't we do isn't there a way of doing can we do shearing on the actual character here 
you can get the vectors, but you, uh, right now, still the only way that we have is round tripping through PDF, which wasn't something I was eager to. Uh, okay. What about just just for the sake of getting a sense of what's going on? Could we simply rotate these characters, even though it's going to you know just tip them by? Is is there an adjustment box thing? Does the adjustment box thing only move it around? Um, okay, so the question for this you can, you can just use rotate. Okay, so so then for example, for here, I can for alpha and beta, I can just say there. Um, Remember, yeah. they're already somewhat slanted forward, right? We. Well, so I'm going to say alpha is rotate alpha uh, minus 30 degrees, let's say. Right. And beta the same thing. Um, oops, I think I need plus 30, don't I? How come it's, oh, because one is a forward transformation, one is a... Yeah, well, that, what the heck? Oh. You, you forgot. Well, that looks kind of nutso, but, but you know, that doesn't. <laughs> yeah. Try it with, I think if you tried it with the U and V, it would be. Yeah, you'd be better because our, our Greek variables are already by design rendered in a slanted fashion. Oh, I mean, it looks stupid here, but 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 that's because this is a bad way to do it. Right. Um, will it be distinctive enough? I'm a little worried about the optical effect of it somehow making, you know, if it's peppered throughout, half of it's tilted one way, the other half is tilted another way. Some of it's straight. It's going to look really chaotic. Well, okay. Um, do we get Jeremy Davis in this meeting, by the way? Is he here? Um, let me... Doesn't look like it. Um, do you want us to get him? Please. Okay. There's also the issue of metrics. Um, I guess... I guess we will custom draw these characters so we can build in the right metrics for them easily enough, I guess. All right, so look, let's try to simulate. We, we can try and do a better simulation here, but um, if somebody else could write this code, that would be super helpful. Why is this somehow some dead? Something is dead here. Okay, could somebody else try to write this code, please, for one of these? Um, yeah, I was... I was working on something. Okay. Uh, okay. So any other ideas? So other ideas include bars above and below, things like that. Yeah. What would be, I mean, so typically, a, you know, what about an underline? Do we have an underline? Do we have an, oh yeah, underline. I don't, I never use this. What does it mean? How did that, why did that not work? Is that a, is that a, um, a style option? I think that's probably, uh... yeah, it is. Okay, so let's try that for a second here, okay? Well, that's certainly very simple. I mean, I'm not sure if it says formal variable particularly. Comments from people. Hey, Jeremy, we're talking about formal variables again. I'm okay. trying to get rid of the dottiness. Um, and we were thinking about left-leaning italics. Ooh, okay. 
Ignore the black triangles. Yes. Okay, so we got, let, let's enumerate some of the cases, some of the things we could imagine, okay? So we can imagine, um, okay, so there's left-leaning italics, which requires, uh, there's um, underlining. I mean, there's various kinds of, uh, I don't know, we could imagine dotted underlining. I don't know if we care about that. Anybody think that's worthwhile? That's interesting. Um, I think the underlining we get from the function is really tight to the character. I'm curious how it looks if you use the operating system's underlining. Or we could have our own custom model, right? We, we, we replace the algorithm for the two dots with our own custom underlining for these characters. Right. right. So, um, by the oh, way, how do we get... I, I, I'm sorry, Stephen, I had a question, which was uh, when you said dotted underlining, does that mean a dot and an underline, or you mean... An no, I mean the question? underliner itself is made of a bunch of dots. Okay. The underline is made of a bunch of dots. I think that would be really weird. Well, it's hard to get away with with pixels on a screen, but, you know, you would have... It would take five pixels minimum to be convincing. Okay. Uh, right, so I think we could do like single dot or single under dot or sing double under dot, or we could do an underline. Don't see a dotted underline. Okay, all right. So let me, let me just write a function that, ah, look at that, magnificent. Sandra on our live stream has generated something. Let's see what it is. Let's see what it is. Uh, okay. That didn't seem to work, but maybe, oh, it's probably because we need to, this thing has. Oh my gosh. Why is there an improperly formatted? Can somebody see what they're I wonder on? if you need, uh, oh, the, there's the sequence. Oh, you, you need, see the sequence? You need to, another semicolon or line break there. That's definitely amusing. Oh, saying copy the second one because it's better. Okay. Ah, very good. And we have another contribution here. Cool. I feel, I feel a little drunk looking at these. <laughs> well, let's do the following. What I want to do is I just want to write a function that just substitutes these you know what i'm saying with with whatever okay so so let's just think how to do this so what i want to do is character range of that and then i want to say alphabet and i'm just going to go and then i'm going to say transpose that um that's going to give me that and now what i want to do is uh, then for this, let's let's use John's Shearer, okay? And let's say. And um, sorry, sorry. There's one problem with it. It's a fixed image size. The font size didn't actually make a difference here. So you might want to tune down that image size. My definition. Okay. Yeah, I mean, give me an image size that's suitable for these characters because I'm going to actually try and insert yeah, it in here. Um, Like ten or something. Yeah, um, yeah, that's, that's okay. That'll be okay. All right. So let's let's go here. Um, yeah, ten looks fine. Okay. So now what we want to say is map thread of um, hash goes to shear of hash two, 
comma minus 20 degrees. I don't know what the 50 is doing. There. Uh, you can just omit the 50. But but uh, I added that argument if you wanted to add other things like, uh, you know, like underline or something, underlined or something like that. Okay. All right. So this map thread. Oh, boy. This is computing the shears, right? Shears are instantaneous. That's not what takes time. It's running with yeah. Shoot. It's the it's the <laughs> export import. Okay, so there's that. So now let's go ahead with one of these. Well, that one actually has. If somebody can generate some more dotty things that have um, that have dots for um, that just have ordinary character dots, so to speak. Differential root reduce will generate these. Okay. Oh, for goodness sake, why didn't that substitute? Is that because it's inside a function? No, that shouldn't. Oh, it's it. because it's a string. Uh, you're oh, doing yes, yes, yes. On yes, the yes, string, yes. not the symbol. Ah, look, I just had that bug, John. I just had that bug. I clicked no, there. I, I, I don't disbelieve you. It's... It doesn't make it easier to track down and fix. Okay. I mean, this isn't going to be very beautiful because it's got baseline misalignment and all that kind of stuff. Oh, for God's sake. Oh, well, whatever. It's just silly bugs. Hmm. Hmm, 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 hmm. Well, okay, let's compare that with um, something like style of hash two, comma, underlined. I mean, that's definitely a hell of a lot less distracting than the dots. You yeah. know, you know, if this was rendered properly, would it be decent? I don't know. What do you guys think? I don't think it will. I, don't know. I, I look at that and it looks really uncomfortable to me. What, the underlines? No, no, the, the, no. The, the backwards italic. Oh, yeah. No, I agree. I feel drunk. I, it's making me woozy. I don't like it at all. Yeah. The, the underlines seem fine to me. Except for the bug where it's you know crashing into the baseline. Yeah, and it needs an extra tiny. pixel. Yeah. I mean, if if we were to actually provide the character drawings ourselves, we can make them as beautiful as. So they one problem with underline is there isn't a good way to handle what if you want to underline a formal character or I'm a block of text. Sorry, that has does anybody followed. know where I'm saving this? Sum? Or you have a fraction that contains underline, underbar, underline character. Yeah, SW notes variables. Thank you. Sorry, what were you saying, Eric? Underline a current formal character, is it? I'm just worried about typesetting that has horizontal bars already in it like fractions, I think it'll look really ugly to have A underline numerator and then B underline denominator. Okay, well, let's try something like this. Okay, so let's try, let's just try for the hell of it. Let's try. Okay, well, that didn't. That wasn't quite as extreme. I mean, that's certainly harmless. I don't know whether it's very... Okay, so now Eric's point is, if we just take 
A, I don't know. Let, let's take a what Andre font people. What's a bad example? J, anything with a descender, probably. But you know, just do an A over a B, and with the lines, I'm curious. You know. Okay. Well, fine. A. Interesting. Yeah, well, that's a bug, and right. It's not well, it, no, it, it's it's not a bug, but don't worry when you when you right. evaluate yeah, it, yeah, you'll yeah, see okay. what you want to see. Well, actually, the the closeness of those underlines makes this look better. Yeah, it helps actually in this case, but I don't think the closeness of the underlines is obviously horrible. I mean, the P looks a little bit odd, but but you know, the problem is you want something that integrates with the letter, doesn't distract from the letter too much. Do we, do we want to draw our own underlying that will be below the descender for the descending letter? Not necessarily, is my conclusion. Uh, Landa by sent by us the way, you, tell you were really to... quiet. I could barely hear you. I, I was asking if for letters with descenders, if we want to draw the underlying, you know, for these specific, for the formal variables, if we want to draw the underlying beneath the descender. Okay or if it's better to have them all at the same height. I mean, it's kind of interesting that it crosses the descender. I think it's interesting. I think it's fine. I think for the purpose that we want this for, I think it's just fine. I, I don't think we're looking for, um, okay, this is a suggestion of Sanders. Let's just try. Okay. I know. I just, uh, well, maybe it's just me, but I really don't like that underlying cue. Okay, hold on. Let's just try this for a second. I mean, I guess you could also worry about putting an overbar over it to indicate a mean, which is a fairly common notation. Oh, yeah. Guys, comments on, on Sandra's suggestion here. Well, it, looks, stream. it looks decent, but you know, notation like that would make me think dimensions of. Maybe that's not not something we need to worry about. But. Well, no, I agree that that's a possible concern. But the question is really, I mean, okay, look, the dots are just total losers, basically. The dots are way too distracting. Well, two of them are. What about if it's just one on top? I, that's not useful. That's that's oh, no, Newton's no. fluxion notation. Well, one on bottom. That's yeah, one on the bottom, I think, uh, has a chance of... I think it'll be totally dotty and distracting, and we can try it. And I think you should. The ones I dislike least are the dot on the bottom and the underline on the bottom. I really yeah. What about if it was a, a rectangle with rounded corners, about as tight as this one is now, and it's sort of gray? Because then it's sort of encapsulated in some way, kind of like what Ender is trying to do with these square brackets. You mean that it's a boxed symbol, basically? It's a box symbol, basically, with a sort of a, you know, it's pretty tight, it's it's rounded, it's gray, but it feels like it's sort of something else. It's not so yeah. Well, I mean, what do we mean by a formal symbol? What we mean by a formal symbol, it's in a sense a protected object. Right. Um, um, boxed in. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't want that to be confused with key characters. Yeah, I, but I don't, but those are, none of them are one letter, right? They're all ESC, escape. Uh, I don't know. I mean, well, it, the documentation, if you have keyboard shortcuts, right? Then, of course, well, if one did want to represent the key A, one might do this, but I think that's a different end of the world from these kinds of formal variables. Right. And also, and also those are have much more space than I think what Roger's suggesting. Yeah, I mean those are those. Let's, really let's look try. Like... No, I actually, I'm actually quite encouraged by this one. Let, let's try. Let me just look at something. Could, could, could somebody give me a bigger example? Does somebody have a bigger example of something with lots of dots in it? Yeah, differential root reduce will generate you as many as you want. Okay, just tell me what to type. Then type a function. You know, like Bessel J. Pick something. Zero. X. Yeah, for instance, come X. Like that? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's pretty dotty. 
Um, and those ones have primes in them too, just which makes it very hard to pick out the primes <laughs> with the dots. <laughs> okay, so let's let's try. Um, our primes are pretty subtle too. Might be something to revisit. Well, there's a bunch of extra space around these things. Okay, so we've got that case. So what happens if we have to put two together, like a symbol with two former characters? Yeah, okay, let's look at that. And in a way, we could sort of formalize any character by then doing that box around it, actually. Yes, which would actually be better than, I mean, how it's represented internally is a different issue, because it's got to be represented using formal characters. And right. that differential root reduce, I think that underline is much better than the standard boxy thing. Probably. Uh, the boxy approach is also an issue with slanted variables. We're not seeing them slanted. Is that intentional or just an accident of... Well, combining? okay, so the question here might be, I don't know what will happen. It would probably go bonkers if we try and traditional form this. What, what, what happens to formal variables in traditional form? They use a traditional form font, but they basically look the same. And that's certainly an advantage of, of the modification being done systematically and not within the font drawing, right? Within the character drawing. It's nice to be able to let the characters change and the styling, you know, font choices change. Um, I don't know how you deal with the problem of <laughs> expect symbols though. Of which? Well, I mean, right now this works because these are letter-like characters, which means that they can define symbols. If you instead have, well, so there are two ways to go, I suppose. Uh, one is you could have some kind of decorator wrapper around it, but then you run into semantic problems exactly like the ones we're seeing here with our experiments. The other is, I suppose you could invent some kind of combining character, but the front end doesn't have combining character support yet. Your point is, if one wanted to box a sequence of characters, it would be like using some or, or, or box arbitrary. It doesn't even have to be a sequence; just an arbitrary character. I mean, how do you box an arbitrary character? Oh no, I think we we have a new font character that is the boxed version. But as you point out, if we have you know, A, B, C all together, and they're all boxed. They'll all be individually boxed. And they we don't have a way to, to, to well, wrap the box around everything. Just to be clear, at the present time, we're just talking about, you know, changing the rendering of the existing characters. We're not talking about... Well, right, but the problem is if we use a box type solution, if there are multi-character formal variables, I mean, right now, multi-character formal variables are going to be pretty crazy and dotty, right? Because there's going to be dots around every character, but at least it will work. Depends if, on the definition of work. I mean... Yeah, fair enough. Well, I mean, so, so if I were to do this... The sequence formal X, formal Y will create the symbol global backtick formal X, formal Y with no protection. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Right, so that won't work. Yeah, I mean, you know, anything which preserves the Unicode characters but just changes their rendering is pretty straightforward. But anything that doesn't do that raises issues of compatibility and, you know, maybe even whether or not it's possible. Okay, so look, the minimal solution here is purely to re render the formal, formal, uh, you know, these formal letters, right? So we've agreed the double dot thing is just disastrous, right? So the question is, we've got, you know, the minimal case here would be to use um, single uh, dot below. Yeah. Well, or I don't think that's going to work, but let, let's try it. I mean, can, can somebody write me simulation code for that? 
I mean, that that would be literally. What, what do I do? I do under. Um, underscript. Yeah, underscript with you know the string containing a center dot or a period. In the case now, we use gray dots, so you could even style it gray. Right, well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So let's do. Did I get this right? No. No. Uh, yeah, it's backwards, right? You want. You want the, the dot first and the gray second to start. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. Can I use an adjustment box to get that thing closer? John? Um, yeah. Do we have an upper dot, maybe? maybe? <laughs> uh, well, it doesn't help that those are kind of like drunk different heights. It's pretty it's ugly. A, it's less opinion. dotty. Yeah, it's less dotty. Um, if the dots were closer, it wouldn't be that ugly, I don't think. I think, okay. I think that uh, that looks kind of, you know, that looks entirely decent to me. I mean, obviously, the fact that the dots are sort of the scattered height is making it hard to compare directly with the under under script, or underline, I mean. But, uh, well, it's certainly a very trivial change to just, you know, you know, chop the dots off from the top. Is Michael here? And does he have an opinion? I like the just the under dot. That, I think that looks nice. It makes it sufficiently different. So if you know what you're doing. I mean, John, how long would it take you to mock up just the under dot? Maybe we can, you, you can just, if that's five minutes, maybe you can just send us a screenshot at some point and, and we assess what it looks like. For you. Right, I mean, there's, there's another I, advantage uh, for the under dot. Yeah, I can so. work on it right now. <laughs> there's another advantage for the under dot, which is that it sort of has some continuity with what we're already doing. Now, what about what about this idea of you know switching from formal to informal things? I mean, by the way, do these dots line up well enough? Let me just try something here. If I take a bunch of these and I say string join. Right, so well, I have to say, apart from the descenders, that wouldn't look so terrible. If we, if it was just the underdot. Yeah, I think if you, you know, just put even a multi-character thing would look sort of okay. It would look yeah, like just just line. just like put your finger horizontally over the upper dots and block your view of it, so that you just see the characters and the underdots, and it's not bad at all. And the descender is okay; it's within expectations. Well, our live stream is saying it's still too dotty, but I think, I think that the, um, uh, well, we can certainly. Here, let's just do this. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Put another window over it, right? No, well, that's one way to do it. But I was thinking of doing this.
I agree that that's not absolutely hopeless. I mean, it looks a little bit, you know, clearly there it has a certain leopard look. Right, but you don't normally have seven yeah, that's, that's, multiplied right, together. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and no, but about, I was thinking of a multi multi character symbol. How do I yeah. make more? Why is, why is commands minus not working well? Command minus changes the font size, which won't affect an image. Right. Well, I have to say that really doesn't look that bad. I mean, it looks a hell of a lot better than those stupid dots on top. I agree. Hmm. And as your example demonstrates, you're more likely to have ascenders than descenders. Is that a fact about? I don't know if it's a fact, but it looks that way. <laughs> well, let's look. I mean, the let's only descenders out. are G, J, Y, and Y. P, Q. Oh, yeah, P and Q are other common in formulas. Right. But the dots over I and J are silly anyway. Sure. I guess looking at the other letters, it's sort of an even mix of ascenders and descenders. Okay, well, all right, look, I think we have a path forward. Now, the only question is this formal, you know, turning everything into a formal symbol and so on. Why did we in introduce that? Why did we want to introduce that? Because we wanted to have a way of generating, oh, that's right, as an inverse function, that's right. We wanted to have multi-character so what would happen if we if we had a function called formal symbol of ABC, for example, that would, well, so you're saying it has to dotify it, and so it would have to put it in the system context and dotify it. Is that correct? So what this would turn into is system backtick, and then it would be. What does dotify mean in that case? A single dot under the the combined string? No, I was thinking it meant dot under everything. So how, how's that different than multiplying, you know, ABC? No, no, I'm saying that that um, it's literally a character where the where the where the or just visually it'll look the same, right? Well, no, it'll have spaces. I mean, yeah, I guess we have X's now for multiply. Well, and even without the X's, there's a difference between the sequence ABC and A. ABC being multiplied. Yeah, I, I wouldn't worry about that, Jeremy. I think I think ABC multiply. I mean, that's the problem. Oh, great. Um, now forever, your machine is going to have these slanting s's. Right. So, what would be the result of this formal symbol thing, ABC? It would be replace the characters by by the formal letter the analogous formal letters and create a system context symbol. Right, but it would only, you could only, I mean, and then you could use those things, but only after having called formal symbol of ABC to create it. Well, no, but, but for example, the case that we've run into is for axiomatic theory. Um, the, uh, but, but, but this would only work, right? I mean, formal symbol of string uh, open bracket quote ABC is not a symbol, so you couldn't use it and say compile directly. What you could do is or no, you'd have to create it model. first, right? So you could evaluate formal symbol ABC, which would create the system back to a you know formal A formal yeah, yeah, formal right. C symbol, and then you could type that in. Uh, and use it, but then you know your things will only evaluate correctly in later sessions if you remember to reevaluate formal symbol of ABC. Wait a minute. In later it, sessions, you're saying it won't go into the system context. That's the problem. 
Right, unless you reevaluate, yes, unless you reevaluate formal symbol of ABC. Yeah, I understand. And and uh, it would have the same properties as the current formal symbol. You couldn't make assignments to it. Sure, I mean. We well, yeah, but but as you're pointing out, you'd have to predefine it that way. Look, exactly. the case that we've run into is a case in axiomatic theory data. Okay where well, we want to define, let's say, the inverse operator for groups or something, we want to call it INV. And we want that to be a lowercase INV, but we just don't want it to be confused with, you know, a standard user level symbol. Is this a useful, uh, useful solution or not? I mean, clearly we can simulate that solution for that package, although it's going to be unbelievably painful. In other words, oh boy, I don't think this quite works. I don't know, because because of this issue about the system context thing. If it wasn't for that, I think this would work to sort of create a formal thing or not. But why do we want it in system? Because the fact that it's using the formal characters probably shows that users, I mean, probably indicates that users would not have used this symbol. Well, I agree. I agree. Well, because well, well, for one thing, all the formal symbols are in system. And well, the single character formal system, formal symbols are by convention in system. And I mean, I, I guess the question is, in what context would you want to create it? In whatever context you'd want to create, it certainly is not going to be protected until you rerun formal symbol. And it won't no. exist in whatever context you... I mean, there's a certain security and obscurity because people are not going to create, you know, you kind of know you're doing something funky, just like there is a certain security in the fact that system symbols tend to start with capital letters. Users can start things with capital letters, but then there might be a collision. Right, or, or the X dollar 125. Yes, that's true. Right, so, okay, so then the idea here would be, I mean, maybe we can try, um, maybe Jonathan could try, uh, you know, we'll just define this formal symbol thing. Look, with, with, the, with the, you know, dots above thing, it's just hopeless. But dots just below, I think it's not completely crazy. I think we should try it with dots just below. And we should suggest to Jonathan that for the axiomatic theory stuff that he try using this, see how it goes. See, what I would have liked for that INV is to have a single dot under INV. That would visually look kind of clean. You think of it as one formal so, symbol. So what exactly Where, is, where's I the dot? Mean, what exactly is INV supposed to be? It's supposed to be a symbol of some kind, an operator? I don't understand what INV is. It's an operator. Well, it's a, it, yes, but it's a symbol that is standing for an operator. The truth is, okay. The truth is the current convention that we're planning to use. So what this is doing is, okay, we are encoding all sorts of axiomatic theories. Like, let's say, I don't know, the axioms of, of ring theory, for example, okay, which include operators that we don't normally have, okay? Or let's say, I don't know ring theory. Let's say- Well, it has a plus, for instance. Yes, but so what we were planning to do there was to, uh, and, you know, any one of these notational things is a hack. But what we were planning to do was to represent that um, as a, a circle plus, right? In other words, so that it is not, okay, let me, let me just a little speech let about notation stuff. I mean, like, like you know, we all know that the, the whole question about, you know, function X, function X, are the X's the same? Are they not the same? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There isn't a good solution to that. You know, to my great amusement years ago, I look at this giant book, the Hank Berendrecht book on Lambda calculus. And I'm like, surely these guys have got something intelligent to say about this. And no, the last, you know, 25 pages of the book is about this problem. And basically the solutions being proposed there are absolutely insane. And, and are all very, very, very messy. So, I mean, I think it's a sort of a fundamental unsolvable. Okay, so anyway, that's a preamble for the hack that I'm proposing that we use, which is that the plus of ring theory will become circle plus, and we make the assumption 
that nobody has assigned a value to circle plus, okay? So similarly, if we use a variable, if, if we're gonna use F and G for, uh, um, you know, then we can't assume that sure. F and G don't have values assigned, but we're going to assume that, you know, that then formal F and formal G don't have values assigned. Okay, okay. So, so, uh, so first of all, you can't assume that nobody has assigned things to circle plus. There are a gazillion packages all over the world which have assigned definitions to, to circle plus. Okay. So if, I understand that. I understand. So, but, so, so wait, wait, wait. Let me finish. So yeah. if right. So if what you're saying, if so, if we're talking about some sort of add-on package which is not system, then in the context of that package, circle plus can be whatever the hell it wants. But we can't just globally steal circle plus. This is John's underdots. And I mean, there, you, you, there seem to be- That looks a hell of a lot better than the, I mean, it's remarkably much better than the ones with overdots. I think so too. It seems tolerable. The one with overdots is absurd. Can you scale it down? Maybe John could should save one that's bigger. Um, yeah, I just right click, uh, right click, and set the magnification to one. I think, or but yeah, that, well, that's about right in any case. Well, it's certainly better than the ones with dots above. I think it's a somewhat acceptable. But I, I'm sorry, back to Itai's point. Okay, so. The only way we could avoid this is by having some some additional, you know, dotted circle plus, right? Uh, so you're, I mean, so for, first of all, that right, we, we need to separate op, separate out operators from symbols, right? These are not the same thing. They have very different parsing properties, right? So I. I to 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 quote uh, to quote uh, um, oh dear I'm blanking on his name but I sense a great deal of confusion here um, so and I know maybe Jose and I should have a, a set, an offline discussion about okay what, can, can yeah. I just tell you what the issue is with the, okay so what we are trying to do is we're trying to return axioms for axiomatic theories okay. Okay. Those axioms are extremely formal. Both the operators and the formal variables and the constants are all, you know, very formal, right? Their names don't really mean anything. Am I making sense? Sure. So, like, for example, uh, you know, in, like, you know, um, the Boolean algebra stuff I've worked on where, there's, where the main operator of interest is NAND. Right? It's convenient just to represent that with circle dot. Sure. But go ahead. Yeah. Right. Well, look, but, but, but the point is, what, so are you assigning any definitions to circle plus or are you just using it as formatting, right? And just what, using it as formatting. It's what just is the form. full form, right? I mean, you can make the full form typeset however the hell you want. You could make a typeset as an INV with a single underdot by using an appropriate formatting rule. Right, so. Okay, that's a different well, idea. Okay, so your idea, okay, so let me paraphrase that idea. Your idea is that the, that the full form of these things in these you know, axiomatic theories will be some hugely decorated thing with all kinds of uh, sort of structure around the symbols, around the, the, the operator symbols, whatever, right? But your suggestion, which actually we have not considered, is merely to have a print form that does something different. Right. So type in escape reels escape. Reels with capital R or lowercase r? Lowercase. Now okay. look at the underlying box, box structure. You will not see a single double strap. No, I mean, that's the input form. I'm saying unformat the cell. Delete the slash slash input form and unformat the cell.
the right. hell is that? Oh. It's a template box. So you can customize, if you're one of these bizarre people who thinks the wheels are a bold face or rather than a double struck are, then you can customize the appearance of that thing, right? Right, so this is a symbol. It formats in standard form as a double struck R, and right, there's no relation between them, right? I could make, I could have made that format as a little dancing uh, em emoji, uh, right? So you're suggesting the implicit suggestion here. What would you do though? I mean, remember these things in, let's say, you know, ring theory or whatever. The mm -hmm. X's and Y's that are coming out in ring theory are well. They're formal variables. That, that's okay. We use formal variables for that. But the operators there are completely arbitrary things. I mean, they don't mean anything. They're, they're, it's just a formal theory, right? It doesn't have any uh, yeah, you know, so the interpretation. What's the problem? I, I still don't understand what problem it is you're trying to solve. Okay. The problem I'm trying to solve is that I want lattice theory to use, actually, I would love it to use pluses and times in its display and to have something that I can reasonably man manipulate and reasonably type in the, um, you know, an input form for that. You see what I'm saying? Well, I mean, I, I, th those are not all, I, I claim those are not all mutually compatible goals without a lot of work, right? I mean, the, that, that, uh, you know, typesetting and parsing are hard. Typesetting is hard, parsing is even harder. Well, I know. That's why we were trying to get an El Cheapo solution by having the thing come back by sort of hijacking some of our standard, you know, operators and so on. I mean, if, if, right. But my, so my basic point is if, if you're not assigning any values to those things, sure, you can use circle plus whatever you want. That's what its purpose is, is the format there without... The, the purpose is to be able to do formal things. So, for example, you might say, I've got this axiomatic theory. I want to, you know, prove like reduce style, you know, do something with this formal expression. I don't want to assign values to it. I, you're, I think you're going to need to be a lot more concrete. I mean, okay. Get... Well, I would be interested to get you involved in this discussion because we have to kind of come to some kind of closure here. All right, I, we're gonna we're gonna wrap this meeting. We've got the meeting about annotations. Gosh, another live stream meeting, um, another live stream meeting, which is starting late. Uh, but anyway, um, okay. So I think we've got a good conclusion here. Let's go ahead and and just chop the top dots off. Okay. Okay, and and we still got to discuss this formal symbol function and the related stuff about axiomatic theory. So that will need to be a separate meeting. Um, okay, with a different set of people here. Uh, it can be a much smaller set of people. Uh, okay, thanks a lot, guys. Thanks for the comments on the live stream. And uh, those who are interested uh, from the live stream, I encourage you to come to the next meeting, which will start in a couple of minutes. Thanks. See you guys.